Oh my gosh, look at the mountains back there. Check this thing out. Oh, it's incredible. This must be why they call it the Ledges Trail. That was a serious hike. We are at the highest point in Southern Maine. Well, I like this guy. Mm, fresh from the orchard. Oh, fish on, oh, fish. fish on. This used to be part of the Massachusetts Commonwealth, and they just couldn't get along politically. So in 1820, they seceded and became the 23rd state. Really? That's a fascinating I fact. I read in this state they invented my favorite dessert, whoopie pies. Of course you would know that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at this. Oh my gosh, look at the mountains back there. Oh my gosh, look how busy the lake is today. Everybody's out enjoying it. It's a parade of pontoons. <laughs> so this is the small town of Naples, but it's not Naples, Florida. It's certainly not Naples, Italy. This is the town of Naples, Maine. The drive was easy. We headed up I-95 north. Once we got into Maine, we crossed the Saco River, headed west, right into the campground. Next right, Loon's Haven Family Campground. Home base for the week. So we arrived at the campground, and I thought it was a great time to show you how to hook up the electric. So this is a line booster or a line conditioner. They call it the Hughes Auto Form. It boosts always 2%, but if it ever drops where it's dangerous, it boosts at 10%. And okay. that's really the wow. value in this. Yeah. Let's check this out. Put it in here. All right, plug it in. Everything is green. Line one, line two are grounding, neutral. Any polarity issues, any grounding issues, this tells us and that will tell us. Okay. All right, nice. good clean power. Once we got the auto former hooked up, we're gonna go ahead and hook up the power watchdog here. And she's gonna be four seconds. All right, and if there was a problem, this watchdog would show up red and it would show an error code here. And here are the error codes right here, whether it's a neutral issue, a grounding issue, it's all right here on the side of the watchdog. All right, again, you can see, you wanna hold that, yeah. take a look at it. It's really kinda of cool, they got an app. Wow, that boosted us up to 126. Yep. All right, I'm going to plug this in, good and clean. Now the RV, and we're going to wait to hear it provide power. You're going to hear it. There you go. Nice. It's kind of a huge deal. Yeah, that's a good one. See what I did there? I'm glad I know now. Yeah, cool. After we got done with that, I thought it was a great opportunity for us to go watch the sunset. We do it every first day, headed over to Freiburg for something special. Our first hike in May. Yeah, I think it's a short hike. It's perfect for day one. How did you find this place? Well, I did some research when I knew we were coming to the area here. I figured it was a great place to watch the sunset. It's almost like I crave steps after a long drive like that. Not bad for our first glimpse of Maine. The sun is kind of a pink tonight. Gosh, it's got all these different layers. It's absolutely beautiful. I saw something around the corner here that, let's see what we're looking at. Oh, what's that? Oh, wow, this is cool. Check this thing out. Looks like it's matched to the landscape. Like we're looking at each one of the peaks. Okay. There's Mount Washington. Right there. Pleasant Mountain. Guess what we're doing tomorrow? We're hiking Pleasant Mountain, which is that. Sweet. All right, let's go check out the sunset. I'm gonna just grab a seat right here this and looks wonderful. watch this ball drop. That's beautiful. Cool little town down there, Freiburg. Yeah, Freiburg is right on the border of New Hampshire and Maine. The weather couldn't be more perfect. We have a front row seat I know. once again <laughs> to a splendid end of the day. The jockey cap sunset. That's what this is called? Jockey this whole cap. Rock they call jockey cap. 
here's to another three more days of exploring. This is going to be a good week. I can't wait. So we woke up on day two, jumped in the toad, took a short drive over to Denmark, Maine to hike the Ledges Trail at Pleasant Mountain. Once we got there, we got to meet John Evans, who is the steward for the Loon Echo Land Trust, who manages the mountain. Welcome to Pleasant Mountain Preserve. This is our largest preserve at 2,100 acres, has about 10 miles of hiking trails, and spectacular world-class views that you'll see today. Pleasant Mountain is the highest mountain in southern Maine at 2,000 feet. It's constantly underestimated. It's still a vigorous hike, and you should be prepared when you come to Pleasant Mountain. I've been excited and thinking about this hike since you told me we were doing it. Well, this is a... Uh, this is no joke. We're at 700 feet now, and we're going to head up to 2,000, so this is a pretty good elevation gain. These trails are not perfect, but we do our very best, but you're still in a backwoods scenario here. John had said they work with the Appalachian Trail Club to create this. Really? Yeah, so these are folks that know what they're doing. So you have come to the Ledges Trail, which I would say is our most popular, most visited trail. The trail's about one and a half miles. It's about a 1,300 foot elevation gain. We had to take our time going through the switchbacks, very, I mean, a very steep incline. It was about a mile up to the first overlook. This is certainly not what John said for the novice. You can tell we're getting near the top here. The rocks and the ledges are getting bigger. When you get up to the first lookout, what was known as the Ledges Overlook, you'll be looking south, southeast, so you'll be looking towards the ocean. You'll see Sebago Lake, you'll see Moose Pond, you'll see many area bodies of water that people come to play on and visit. So this must be why they call it the Ledges Trail. Well, part of it, for sure. I think we're only about three quarters of the way up. Yeah, but this is our first overlook. Look at this view. I'm gonna have to break out my sunglasses for the first time. Yeah since we left the bottom. Oh, my word. Oh, look, it's a perfect little spot for us to sit. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, it's incredible. Here, come sit here, I'll, I'll get you. Yeah, it's like a little natural bench. Oh, that wasn't very graceful, but I'll take it. Oh. Moose Pond looks like glass. glass. <laughs> it's a perfect reflection. We're only three quarters of the way up. Yeah, I know, and this is already spectacular. Yeah. You know, neither one of us have ever been to Maine. You know, what a way to check that box. After that stop at the first ledges overlook, I'm glad we refueled, we got a little bit of energy in us, and then made that final push. Oh, look, here's the tower John talked about. That means we're at the top, thank God. <laughs> look at this amazing view up here. Oh, gosh. What does this say? Summit, 2,006 feet. We started at 700, so 1,300 feet, and boy, it was a tough hike. That was a serious hike. When you get to the end, the views are world-class of the Saco River Valley and you will see Mount Washington, the presidential mountains, the White Mountains of Maine and New Hampshire. So it's a dramatic setting. Watch your step, the last couple are doozies. Yeah, no tripping now. Yeah. God. Oh my goodness. We are at the highest point in Southern Maine. It was a serious hike. He said, moderate to strenuous, I'm going with serious. <laughs> Serious, strenuous, it was all the above. This was an excellent day. This is a great way to explore Maine. You and I have never been, and we're in Maine. Uh, we still gotta go down. Yeah, I know. So you've got us camping in Naples. Day two, we went to Denmark. And on day three, we're heading to Sweden to Pie Tree Orchard to go pick some apples. 
This is one of Patrice's favorite things to do, is get some fruit and vegetables for camp night. So we headed over and met the general manager, Matt. Ah, there he is. Hey, how are you? <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Sorry for my food. He tells us all about the different apples that they grow, and I don't know if I was even listening because all I kept doing was staring at all these beautiful apple trees loaded with fruit. So how do you know when they're ripe and ready to pick? Well, so we test them daily. You can't really, I mean, you can kind of get it steered by the color, and then we have harvest logs that kind of give us a, a ballpark. But really, the only way to know for true is to just test it. So you just pick one. And I wouldn't normally pick a good one. I'd try and leave those for the customers, but like, I find one with, yeah, like this. It's got like bug stings or whatever on it, so it's, but it's still ripe and has the right color, so. Can you just taste it? There he did it. It's almost ready. <laughs> this one's a little tart, but it's not bad. Very nice. That's a pretty scientific process you got there. Well, it's a tasty one. It is a tasty <laughs> one. I like to say I'm farm grown, just always had been passionate about growing and about food. So these are red free, which is one of our early approaching mid varieties. Right now we're picking ginger gold. That's starting to get really popular as a name for it, but we also have ones like Honeycrisp that everybody knows about. Uh, we will have Max and Cortlands, of course, but some of the ones you might not hear about are Zestar or Sopa Spitzenberg or Dudley Winter. Some of them are tart, some of them are sweet, some of them are good for cider, some of them are fresh eating or bakers. There's a little bit of everything out there. Pick your own bags. You can get a half bushel, you can get a peck. You basically pay for the volume, so you take the bag out of the orchard, you fill it as much as you want, you know, one apple or, or as many as you can fit. He looks good. Oh, I like this guy. Nice, look at how pretty that He's color beautiful. is. He's beautiful, you wanna try him? I've never seen a yellow apple. I mean, really. Well, there's golden delicious, but these are ginger golds. Wow. That's good. Yeah? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Mmm! Thanks for getting lipstick all over it. Do you want to go over there and get the honey crisp? Oh, that's the honey crisp. I see him, yeah. Yeah, do we, can we cut through yeah, here? Yeah, we can cut through right here. Okay. I like this guy. And he's not coming off. Ooh, I got all of it. Oh, nice. <laughs> Talk Real. about fresh. Oh, look, there's a bench here. You want to yeah. stop and Have sample a, a couple? <laughs> this is your kind of place, isn't it? I could wander around here all day long just picking up apples and eating them. And talking to the trees. And talking to the trees. I mean, they're gorgeous. How could you not? What was your favorite of all these apples? I'm digging the honey crisp. I like the ginger gold. That one's good, too. I've never had a ginger gold. I've never seen anything like it. It's sweet. I like it. I really like well, it. Well, cheers to another wonderful day in Maine. Awesome. This is beautiful, babe. This is probably the best sunset I've seen in a long time. I'm making uh, your favorite dinner that I cooked the first time I ever cooked for you. Yeah, it was at your house in Tampa. Yeah, they set aside some of these beautiful peaches at Pie Tree Orchard for me today, and I was inspired. Fantastic. I look forward to it. It's going to be delicious. I don't think I've ever cooked lakeside. Yeah. As the sun sets, this is gorgeous. And you got this little duck who's sitting here watching you. Oh, hey, buddy. He's just chilling out. He can join us for dinner. I have plenty. Kevin, look yes. at these peaches. Oh, wow. That looks fantastic. I love it. Nice. I learned new words today. A maple orchard is called a sugar bush. <laughs> yeah. That makes me giggle. So the sun was going down over Tricky Pond right here at the campground, and what a delicious way to end our third day here in Maine. All right, dinner's ready. You about ready to sit down? Heck yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's go. Perfect timing, too. Okay. All right. I love it. Day four arrived, we woke up super early to go fishing on Sebago Lake. I don't know what it is about fishermen, whether it's saltwater or freshwater, you gotta get up super early, but I really didn't mind. 
The fog coming up off of Sebago Lake was gorgeous. So we headed over to the marina and met Captain Tom Roth. He lives on the lake, he knows the history, and most importantly, where to catch the fish. And we're on Maine's deepest? Right? Maine's deepest lake. At the highest water level, it's 316 feet. Glaciers went through and carved it out. There's some rivers that come into it, but it's primarily spring-fed. Evaporates a million gallons a day in the summer. Back when the oceans became lakes, landlocked salmon was an Atlantic salmon that got stuck here, and they adapted over time to live in fresh water. I've never really fished this type of scenario. He had the planer boards out on each side. He had the downriggers all the way at the bottom. He had his boat following the contours. It was a really fascinating scenario to, to fish for lake trout and landlocked salmon. There you go. Steady Come pressure. On, McCabe. Steady pressure. Fish on. Get that bottom thing out of the way. You feel him? It's a ski trout. <laughs> <laughs> you might have the record for the littlest <laughs> fish I've ever had on this boat. <laughs> But your fish dance moves need to improve. He's there got you a go. Woohoo! That's bait He's almost. The luckiest you got a salmon. <gasps> you got a salmon. Look at it. Yep, that's two shorts. We got to get it back in the water. Some of these salmon are the same genetic strain as the ones that were originally there. These have been here since the glaciers. Oh my gosh, that's a salmon. That's a salmon. That's crazy that deep. Look at that. Beautiful landlocked salmon. Quick measure of them. I'm right here, as I always tell the biologist, 13, so we gotta let him go. So, right I'm there. gonna release him as soon as you're ready. My first Sebago leg salmon. He's a small guy, so Great let's let job. him go. But he's fat, so he's healthy. Yeah, he's healthy. Great right. job. All right, you wanna let him go right here? Let me, uh, yeah, spend some time in the water with him, get it through his gills. Okay. Great job. Come on, big guy. Come on. Oh, there he goes. Took a breath. Come on, big guy. Come Let on. that water run through Here the field. Nice job. Yeah, give me some of the fish slime. A little fish slime for nice you. Nice job. Fish slime nice for job. You. Tom is a wealth of knowledge. And what I really liked to hear him say was all the guides there on the lake really share the information back and forth and they help each other. So anybody can come and do this. Okay, oh, fish, fish on. Oh, fish. fish on. Oh, fish right on. There. Just came up as we, it's right there. <laughs> yeah. Just followed us up and hit. I'm sorry. The lake trout, no? Yep. Oh, that's yeah, a nice one, too. Nice one. Gets a lake trout. Nice one. Nice! It's a nice one. We caught both species that he said we would catch. We caught the trout. We caught the salmon. <gasps> He's gorgeous. Give him a kiss. <laughs> Always got to kiss your first lake trout. <laughs> He's cold. He's yeah, slimy, he too. OK, yeah. anything special? Yep, just get him in the water. Give him the old boga. Oh, he's Got gonna it. go. He's he's lively. There he goes. Can, Boom. I, get, can I get a nice high five? Nice job. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Woo. It was another wonderful day. We did the mountains. Now we were doing the lakes today. So I enjoyed it. You didn't want to take any fish home, but you can't go home empty-handed. You need something to remember you from Sebago Lake. So I've got a copy of my book, A Sporting Year in Maine, for you to enjoy. I hope you read it and make some more memories. I'm gonna read it. I hope you signed it. Of course I did. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was a great day. What was your favorite part about Maine? For me, it was Pleasant Mountain, the Ledges Trail, Southern Maine's highest mountain at 2,006 feet. What a view. If you come here, you got to try it. I agree. I love the Ledges Trail. I love a challenging hike, but I'm going to say Pie Tree Orchard. You cannot beat walking through this beautiful orchard, picking apples right off the tree and eating them. Gosh, what a wonderful day. Coming home and camp night, cooking for you. I mean, Maine's got it going on.